coming up on today's show. Ford announces a doubling down on its commitment to electric vehicles, promising to spend $22 billion on electrification in the next four years. Sandy Munro and Elon Musk sit down for a very nerdy chat. And Super Bowl fever hits the EV ad sphere as General Motors, Audi and Porsche all step in to the ad ring. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to TEN, Transport Evolved News. I don't know about you, but this week has been, yeah. So let's get on with the news and see if we can make it end on a high. This show is sponsored by the Electric Auto Association. Join them and help the switch from fossil fuels to electric today by going to electricauto.org. We start today with the news that, following a trend that's now developing among mainstream automakers, Ford says it's doubling down its electric vehicle investment. Announced as part of its fourth quarter 2020 and full-year financial results, Ford's CEO Jim Farley said this week that the brand will increase its investment in both electric and autonomous vehicles through 2025. In total, it's committed to increasing the spending on electric vehicles to $22 billion in the next four years, while autonomous vehicles will get a total investment of $7 billion. With its Mark E already being delivered and the Ford F-150 electric due next year, not to mention the all-electric e-transit, Ford's roadmap for going electric has existed for some time. It's great to see another major automaker double down on EVs, but as many have noted, the timing seems a little coincidental to some of the US political changes of late. For many years, Apple has been rumoured to be working on its own fully autonomous electric vehicle. And because of the sheer amount of money that Apple has kicking around, it's been able to do all of that research and development in-house through a dedicated Skunk Works unit, meaning little is really known about its efforts outside of the company. In recent months, there's been some pretty big rumours flying around to suggest that Apple has been courting Kia as its preferred manufacturing partner partner for its first car. This week, a new report surfaced suggesting that Apple will invest $3.6 billion into Kia as part of a collaboration on the Apple car production line. Except that's now changed because according to Gizmodo, about an hour ago, Apple is no longer talking to Kia, it's not talking to the press, and neither is Kia. But apparently Apple is talking to other automakers. So your guess is as good as mine as to whether this is actually going to happen or not. Back to me from the past, or maybe the future. We often cover news of major investments in the electric auto industry, but today we're doing something different, covering a sizable investment in the electric bicycle world. The recipient, Seattle-based Rad Power Bikes, which has just announced a minority investment of $150 million from a number of well-known institutions, including CounterPoint Global, Fidelity Management and Research Company, and the RISE Fund. The investment will be used to help Rad Power Bikes expand its presence in the United States, and the company says that it will have a retail and service network covering 75% of all of the US customers by the end of this year. I've ridden a Rad City power bike and reviewed it on this channel, so if you haven't checked that out, do so at the end of this show. Stone toadstools, aliens, quality control, and why you shouldn't buy a Tesla during a production ramp up. These were just some of the things mentioned this week in a one on one between Tesla CEO Elon Musk and renowned automotive expert Sandy Munro. In a nearly hour long video posted to the Munro Live YouTube channel, Musk chatted candidly and easily with the industry veteran and took Munro's feedback squarely on the chin. And remember, this is someone who once compared the build quality of an early Tesla Model 3 to a 1990s Kia, which you might have assumed would have made the interview rather tense. However, the Elon in that interview was frankly more like the Elon of a decade ago, undefensive, at ease, and willing to discuss the mistakes made, lessons learned, and hopes for the future. And that was really good to see. 
Harley-Davidson unveiled its Hardwire five-year strategic plan this week, and as you might expect, electric motorcycles will be paying a part. While there have been rumours suggesting Harley-Davidson's true commitment to electric power was weak, the new five-year plan pledges to make the brand as a whole a lot more profitable, as well as more desirable, part of which includes expanding the brand into the adventure touring market. Long way up, anyone? But there is, of course, also a commitment to, quote, lead in electric, with the creation of a new division of the company devoted to electric motorcycles. It's not clear that will mean something bad for gas bikes, but it certainly suggests stopping short of a full transition to electric. But given the company lost $100 million last year, I'd suggest it might have no choice. It's Super Bowl weekend, and that means, in the US at least, Billions of dollars are about to be spent on the adverts that will play during the big game. This year, electric vehicles are featuring heavily, with GM bringing out Will Farrell in a star-studded video that focuses on the fact that Norway currently leads the electric vehicle market and tells the country, Norway, no way. The ad was quickly responded to by Audi, with a trio of slightly weird but fun ads featuring Norwegian and Game of Thrones actor Christopher Hayu and the Audi e-tron. Meanwhile, Porsche came out with its own ad, Mr. E, which focuses on how electricity has been misunderstood to this point. They're all different, creative, and frankly a little weird, but enjoy watching them. It's official. After teasing us with sneak peeks last year, Amazon has now officially confirmed that the all-electric delivery vehicle developed for it by Rivian is on the road and delivering parcels. Initially, the all-electric trucks are operating in Los Angeles, but it's expected that as more Rivian-made Amazon trucks roll off the production line, the quirky delivery van with a smiling face will become a feature in most North American cities. Amazon is targeting 15 additional cities to roll out up to 10,000 trucks to by the end of this year. In addition to an all-electric drivetrain, the Rivian-made delivery trucks have a fully integrated Amazon Alexa system for route planning and vehicle system control as well as a 360-degree camera system to help drivers make sure that they can see around the vehicle at all times. If you are not in the US, then you may not know that this past week featured a fairly significant weather event, as large parts of the US received significant snowfall. And in Lordstown, Ohio, that meant that the Lordstown Motors team had a chance to take the Alpha test vehicle, basically a Lordstown Endurance with no bodies on it, out to play. The result is a couple of new videos posted this week in which we see the test vehicle power sliding in the snow and showing off its power by speed ploughing a section of snow-covered test track. But while the video was meant to impress, it left me and others scratching our heads. You see, normally you angle the plough to the left or the right as appropriate. Lordstown didn't, and I've got to ask, why? And now it's time for Short Shorts. Tesla has officially confirmed that it will begin a recall campaign in late March in the United States to replace the eMMC and early Model S and Model X MCUs. Tesla's legal counsel said in a statement to NHTSA this week that the eMMC was designed with a lifespan of just five to six years. Rivian has announced that it will be opening 10 showrooms in the US this year. It won't be calling them showrooms, but rather experience centers. Interestingly, the first one will be in Chicago's Fulton Market neighborhood, not far from where Rivian actually builds its vehicles. Panasonic has confirmed this week that it plans to set up a production line at Giga Nevada later this year for producing Tesla's brand new 4680 form cells. The production line, in addition to Tesla's California line, will dramatically increase cell output. Rimac has entered into the final stages of vehicle validation for its C2 electric hypercar. Two videos just shared show the super powerful boutique car undergo final drag testing and final suspension testing ahead of a trip to the Nürburgring in Germany. Fun times!
Independent third-party specialist Gruber Motors has warned Tesla owners in coastal regions to keep an eye on the battery box bolts for their cars. It recently had to work on a car from San Diego whose steel battery bolts were completely rusted. Just because the car's body is made of aluminium doesn't mean corrosion can't happen. I learned that with my Honda Insight. Toyota and Fiat Chrysler, or Stellantis, dropped their opposition to California's zero-emission vehicle rules this week. Prior to the new administration entering into the White House, the two companies had backed former President Trump's opposition to California's rules, but now they've changed their tune. Washington state's legislature has reintroduced a bill that would require all 2030 and newer model year passenger cars and light duty trucks in the state to be electric in order to be registered. The legislation has to make its way through both houses before it can become law. The UK's car market suffered the biggest slump last year in more than 70 years, with COVID-19 cited by the UK's SMMT as being the reason. The only segment not to fail? Electric cars, with plug-in vehicles suffering a massive boost in sales figures. When Tesla's refreshed Model S and Model X were unveiled, there was a lot of concern that the new yoke-like steering wheel wouldn't be road legal in some markets. But this week we learned that it will be legal in the Netherlands, after Dutch authorities gave the Tesla the go-ahead. Atlas has confirmed this week that it will be working with South Korean firm MediaTek to design, develop, build, install and calibrate all of the machinery it needs to make its own battery cells in-house. But right now, the timeline for Atlas seems almost impossible. It promises us a truck by the end of this year. Tesla customers who'd ordered a Model Y long-range rear-wheel drive car are claiming that Tesla is reaching out to tell them that it will not be making such a variant. Instead, Tesla is asking customers to pick either a standard-range rear-wheel drive or long-range all-wheel drive version. The former has a much shorter range and the longer is much more expensive. Lordstown Motors' deal with LG Energy Solutions for electric vehicle battery cells was something we covered last week. But this week, Lordstown confirmed the deal is for the same 2170 form factor cells that Tesla uses in its Model 3 and Model Y. Interesting. To this point, Tesla has relied on third-party accident repair specialists to fix customers' cars that were involved in an accident. But now Tesla has begun to offer collision repair at its service centers in-house. This should save Tesla money and thus Tesla insurance money, as well as, of course, customers. New patents discovered online this week from Honda suggest that the company might be about to electrify its CB125R commuter bike. While 125 equivalent motorcycles aren't popular in North America, they are in Europe and elsewhere, an electric version could sway that. The Danish Energy Agency has received the green light to build an energy hub off the Danish coast in the North Sea. The artificial island will feature a total power output of 10 gigawatts of photovoltaic solar generation and will be capable of providing power for up to 3 million European homes. A Chinese-based news outlet claims that Tesla is already in the process of conducting environmental impact assessments for the Tesla Model 2, a car that Tesla has discussed in the past and one which Elon Musk has hinted would cost around $25,000. Watch this space. Karma Automotive has announced its intention to bring a new hydrogen fuel cell drivetrain to market. The difference is that it claims to have developed an onboard methanol reformer to produce hydrogen on the go. Yes, it's inefficient. No, I don't think it will catch on. Tesla has officially opened a brand new factory in China where it will mass produce future superchargers. According to reports from local Chinese press releases, it will be capable of producing upwards of 10,000 supercharger stalls per year. In order to make its lineup of electric motorcycles more appealing in certain parts of the world, Energica has announced a new option for all of its bikes, Chidemo, in place of CCS. It's not clear which markets will carry the option, but it certainly means Japanese buyers will most definitely be happy. Tesla gave everyone a sneak peek of the world's biggest die-casting machine this week by posting a video on Twitter of the brand new machine that will be responsible for making the single-piece front and rear chassis components for the re-engineered Model Y and eventually Model 3.
BMW's future electric vehicle lineup has for many years promised a BMW 1 Series sized EV. It was going to be called the BMW i1, but this week some German news outlets are claiming that BMW has quietly cancelled the i1 project, deciding instead to focus on larger electric vehicles. Tesla is reintroducing enhanced autopilot as an option for Tesla customers in China and Europe. They're being given the option to upgrade using their Tesla app to enhanced autopilot instead of full self-driving, which isn't yet legal in some markets. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. The Boring Company, which is pretty much done with its Las Vegas loop, has confirmed that it's been given the green light to continue with negotiations on its latest project, known as the Ontario Loop. For those who don't know, the Ontario Loop is a proposed mass transit project in the San Bernardino County of California, and if given the go-ahead, would consist of a 2.8-mile tunnel linking the airport to the nearest city, Rancho Cucamonga. Right now, the Boring Company is only possible contractor left for the project, so failing something major happening, it is likely to get the contract. The tunnel is expected to cost $85 million, but that's a small fraction of the originally proposed train link. Like Las Vegas, it would rely on Teslas to transport people through the tunnel. And finally, by now, I think pretty much everyone knows about the environmental aspirations of the new Biden White House, with President Biden recently promising to turn the entire US federal fleet 100% electric. This week, he's gone further, confirming his support for reinstating the federal tax credit for EVs at its previous level, but also extending the manufacturer limit beyond the 100,000 car limit that currently exists. Which I'm sure was one of the reasons why the folks at GM Authority decided to take matters into their own hands and come up with a rendering for what they thought an all-electric version of the president's famous limousine, The Beast, might look like. The result? A Cadillac Lyric-faced presidential ride with no tailpipe emissions and presumably an Ultium battery pack. Of course, it's not a reality yet, but we can hope, right? And on that note, we are done for the day. But before I go, I would like to thank the Electric Auto Association for their sponsorship of the show. They've been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967, and they firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean, green electric cars today. You can find out how to join, how to become a local EV educator, find local monthly groups to attend, virtually, of course, at the moment, or find EV owners near to you that you can ask questions to about your own journey from making the switch from gasoline to electric by heading to electricauto.org. I would love it if you'd comment and subscribe to this channel, as well as consider supporting us using one of the links below. There's also a link to our Discord room below, which is free to join, so sign up and come and join in the fun. And don't forget to check out our Redbubble TE merch store. And in case you didn't hear, we are currently looking for a new team member to join us to help handle our social media interactions. There's one week left for applications, so if you're interested, be sure to check out the link in the show notes below. I'll be back next week, but until then, enjoy the rest of your weekend, stay safe, and as always, keep evolving.